the earth was once divided into three realms, heaven, where the gods dwell, earth, where people lived, and the underworld, where the demons continuously endured torture, as the rebirth date approaches, demons will have an opportunity to manifest in the world of the living. A volunteer from the Celestial Army named General Zhang offers to look out for the city of Hu, which is home to the notorious Demon King. Several monsters start to arrive in the city at the same moment and start assaulting everyone there, killing them and taking their souls to the underworld. The souls that the demons have stolen are carried within the black crystal by the enchantment of the object, where they are placed until they may reincarnate and escape this awful world. A guy named Kui steals the crystal while no one else is watching. But a lizard demon immediately notices his odd behavior and removes his cloak to expose that he is a thief. The man is forced to flee for his life as all of the creatures turn hostile and charge at him. The man is being pursued by a powerful demon, who can even strike him. But General Zhang is able to pull him away just in time, saving him from harm. The lizard demon changes into a lady and chases after the robbers, but she only succeeds in catching a glimpse of them fleeing. The demon lord, indignant that his servants would misplace something of such value, immediately goes to one of his most powerful lieutenants, Snow, and orders her to get the crystal back at any cost. The deity gives Kui some medicine to consume when they are back in the human realm and says it will help his wounds heal more quickly. The demons will attack soon after losing their most prized treasure, he warns the man, so they must get ready to confront them. He offers Kui a magical fan and paints the object with the victim's blood, which transforms the warrior into a huge demon. When Kui looks in the mirror and notices the reflection, he collapses in terror, the god forewarns him not to change in front of people since they will undoubtedly become hostile upon seeing him in his monster form. Kui starts her training under the god's guidance, and she soon gains the ability to change at will. He pulls the massive sword from his spine and starts to spar with the master, but his movements are still too slow, and he is unable to hit the master once, he receives one more elixir from the deity, who promises that it will hasten his recovery. The populace of Hu bows before the deity once more as they see the elderly man deliver his magical beast, Chilin, the Dark Crystal. Zhang assures the populace that because they now hold the Dark Crystal, they are on the verge of victory. The souls abducted by the demons would be returned to the people seven days later on the night of the rebirth, and their loved ones would be revived. He cautions everyone to exercise caution around the demons since they will undoubtedly assault the city in an effort to recover their loot. Many entertainers eventually arrive at the city's gates and request entry in order to host their show for the populace. While their wives are shouting in their ears, the guys are instantly mesmerized by the girl's attractive female features. When Kui arrives to view the carriages, it startles him to discover a stunning woman resplendent in all white. The girl disputes the warrior's claim that she is someone he knows from his past and instructs him to name her Snow. Kui shakes the woman's hand as she prepares to depart and remarks on how unusual it is that she feels so chilly, just like someone he knows. The man is extremely lucky to not be living in the 21st century, since his axe would have landed him behind bars by this point, as evidenced by the woman's portrait that hangs over his bedroom. Kui appears to have known her in the past. The man met the woman at his front door three years ago while pursuing his education as a scholar and fell in love right away, inspiring him to create a portrait of the girl. The following day, she surprises him by returning, and when Kui holds her hand, he remarks on how chilly she feels. The two fell in love right away and started aggressively cuddling one another right away. The man doesn't believe that a human can love a demon because he is unaware that his sweetheart is actually from the underworld, but the lady wants to know if it is possible. Later that evening, after recognizing Kui will never accept her for who she is, she departs in tears, rewinding to the present. The artists start their performance as the villagers assemble inside the enormous tent, enthralled by the dancer's beauty. The lizard demon immediately alerts Kui's sister after noticing that everyone else is present besides her, to divert him from her goals. Snow leaves a letter in the main character's home door requesting him to meet. As soon as he enters her room, the man, who has missed her terribly throughout the years she was gone, is instantly possessed by her beauty. The two get close and get ready to engage in some adult behavior. When Kui detects the icicles behind his back and immediately paralyzes the woman by striking her vulnerable areas, knowing that the demons will try to steal the crystal tonight, he goes to the temple where the mystical Chilin is keeping watch over it and removes the object from the box. In accordance with the man's prediction, a huge demon enters the temple, and the Chilin start ferociously fighting it off. Snow has also changed into a demon and is currently looking within the structure for the crystal. As soon as she spots Kui protecting the temple in his demon form, she hits him from behind, knocking him through the rooms. Kui must swiftly dodge many ice shards that Snow launches at him in an attack barely evading the onslaught. As the lizard demon assumes her full form and approaches the box, she is unaware that it is already empty. The woman keeps shooting at the man until she finally attaches him to the wall and freezes him in place. Kui is able to gradually melt himself out of the ice and starts building up a ton of energy, before unleashing it in a shockwave that pushes the snow back. The enormous demon is forced to flee as the Chilin fires from its mouth. 
trapping him under a pillar of stone in the process. The monster is killed when the magical beast rushes towards the foe and bites him on the neck. When the lizard demon presents the box to her lord, who has been waiting for her return, all that is found within is a piece of rock. The demon king becomes enraged and assumes his true form as soon as he realizes they have been duped. Kui gives his master the crystal in the meantime, who congratulates everyone on their latest victory in the conflict. He removes the performers and chains them to pillars, forcing them to become their true forms, which are various lesser demons. As soon as the monsters are killed, the people begin to send their souls towards the crystal. As she observes from the masses, Snow is enraged and starts to morph in an effort to kill the deity in retaliation for the deaths of her friends. Kui watches in disbelief as General Zhang easily overcomes her and forces her back into the human form in front of him. Unexpectedly, the man declines his teacher's order to kill the demon and falls to his knees before the god, pleading for him to spare the life of his sweetheart. When the deity notices that his student is defending the adversary, he attacks the demon directly, but Kui leaps in to save the girl. When the demon lord himself and his army of monsters show up at the city's gates, their focus is swiftly diverted. The soldiers start to shoot a lot of arrows at the attackers, but they are too numerous, and the demons easily smash down the front gates and enter the city. The demon lord is attacked by the Chilin as it runs out of the temple, but the creature soon vanquishes it as it is hurled to the walls and tossed around. General Zhang and Kui manage to stop the demons as they continue to advance into the town center. The deity attempts to assault the adversaries by hurling various projectiles at them. But it is ineffective because the demon lord transforms back into its original shape. When Zhang notices this, he rapidly stabs Kui in the chest, causing him to change himself in order to repel the enormous monster. Kui rushes frantically in an attempt to avoid the strikes as the demon lord pursues him onto the rooftops. The monster lunges at the main character and attempts to tackle him through the structures. But Kui is able to bite off one of the demon's heads and escape, in an effort to take the upper hand while luring the demon into a different location. The warrior sprints towards the lake and dives into the water. Kui has the opportunity to tackle the monster from behind and knock him towards the walls. When the monster accepts the bait by diving into the water as well, the main character is devoured as he tries to flee when the demon becomes enraged and slams the ground, sending a huge shockwave into the air. The monster tries to drag Kui to the surface in an attempt to kill him, but the warrior wakes up and attacks the demon by chopping off his arm. The creature is dragged onto the ground and thrown in the direction of the city, crashing into the structures. As Kui enters the area, the creature rapidly recovers from the fall and roars violently, Surprisingly, though, Kui lets the demon depart as payment for not killing him before and disregards the commands from his lord. The deity commands the guy to slay the snow demon right away because he is furious, because Kui disobeyed him and joined the enemy. When the warrior gets to the prison, the woman is still being continuously tormented by the demon seals. After a brief pause, the man releases her by severing the chains and swears to keep her safe going forward. Kui starts to lose control as the metamorphosis happens as they make their way to a house to hide from the soldiers. The demon lord commands the lizard demon to stop the man as he attacks the woman and pins her to the ground while laughing maniacally. She administers the same elixir to him as the god did and explains that its true use is to quell his wrath. Kui apparently passed away a very long time ago on the last exam to become a scholar. The student's family bribed the headmaster, who decided to fail Kui in order to create a way for the bribe takers. The man's spirit was stirred when he was falsely accused of cheating and brought away to be put to death. He takes the medication to recover control of his body and makes arrangements to travel to hell to confront the demon ruler about what really happened. When the two finally reach hell, a large number of demons are encircling them as the demon lord finally appears. The monster explains to him that he is merely a vengeful spirit that Zhang has brought back to life so that he might steal the dark crystal from the demons. He says that since only demons are permitted to reach this dimension, the guy was changed into a demon by the deity. Kui rejects this and launches a barrage of assaults, but is repelled by the monster's massive aura which causes a significant explosion and eventually reveals the demon's human form. According to Zhang, the demon king was instructed to assault the city in order to capture more spirits to aid in the reincarnation of the demons, but this greatly alarmed the populace. They therefore unquestioningly accepted the Lord as a savior. In actuality, Zhang desires the dark crystal for himself so that, on the night of the reincarnation, he can absorb the souls of every demon and person, giving him enormous power beyond that of any god. As he was made by using the deity's own strength, the demon lord thinks that only Kui can save the realms and bring them back to order. The demon takes all of his energy and gives it to the warrior so that he can prevent the destruction of all the demons. The following day, Kui enters the city and makes an effort to inform the populace that their deity intends to sacrifice them in order to further his own ends. Nobody, though, really believes what he claims, especially after he aided the snow demon in escaping and defended her. Everyone bows in reverence to their god as the deity suddenly appears, but Kui charges forward in rage and keeps blaming Zhang for the wrongdoings. As everyone starts throwing rocks at Kui, thinking that he is the real enemy, the deity employs magic to try to force the guy to transform. Due to the hostility of the crowd, 
Kui loses control and changes into his demon form, which terrifies everyone in his vicinity. The warriors start firing arrows at the protagonist, severely wounding him because he has nowhere to hide. Fortunately, Snow arrives just in time to cause an ice storm that obscures the view and rescues her sweetheart from harm. A big explosion occurs inside the lake as a result of Kui's wrath at being labeled the villain, he flees the city in despair and refuses to face reality, but Snow follows him and eventually uses her embrace to calm the man down. She reassures her partner that he has done nothing wrong, but Kui doesn't think it matters because the Black Crystal would soon murder them all. As Kui finally succumbs to the effort and falls unconscious, the two embrace tightly. Later that night, when the guy awakens, he discovers that Snow has already fled, perhaps to prevent the deity from obliterating the populace. As Zhang unleashes the Black Crystal upon the city, the inhabitants' souls are dragged up into the sky one by one. Snow, who shows up to stop the wicked deity from continuing the frenzy, interrupts his ceremony. She calls the deity a fake god and launches a ferocious ice attack on him. But Zhang rapidly retaliates and repels the forces of nature. The god tries to stop Snow with his magic as she changes into a monster and charges at Zhang. In an attempt to grab the stone away from the deity, the lady manages to throw the crystal into the air before rushing forward. Before Snow can take the gem, Zhang soars fast into the sky and traps her with his power. The demon is struck by lightning that he summons from the heavens and directs at her, paralyzing her in the air with a powerful strike. When Kui bursts through the gates and goes inside the structure, she discovers that a battle has already taken place. When he jumps onto the rooftop, he discovers that Zhang has sealed up his lover, which sends him into a fit of wrath. Kui morphs violently, grabs the deity, and kicks him in the air like a ragdoll and slams him around like the Hulk. The flying deity is attacked fiercely by him as he charges at him, punching him through the structures. The main character instantly locks onto the deity and charges in with a volley of blows. Pushing the foe within his shield, Zhang recovers quickly and strikes Kui with tremendous speed, preventing the man from retaliating in any way. The deity is struck by Kui with great force as he draws his sword from his back, slashing the barrier in half and slicing the elderly man in half with the next blow. In the nick of time, the deity blows up and eventually dies, releasing snow from her cage as well. Kui tries to rescue the woman as she falls from the sky, but she is already dead from the earlier battle. While Kui cries in pain at witnessing his girlfriend vanish into thin air, Snow promises the guy that she will always love him before passing away in his arms. When the people recognize Kui as their genuine rescuer, their souls all start to return to them. Yet no matter how much Kui is hailed, he simply walks away, he establishes harmony between the realms and puts the crystal back where it belongs. Kui declines in silence when the Supreme God offers him a spot in heaven. Recognizing that in the end, gods are nothing more than hypocrites, he leaps into the underworld and assumes his full form, accepting his status as a demon for good. The end, if you like this story, please subscribe to the channel and like it to motivate me to bring you more stories like this.